Hi, I'm Dr. Walter Matwichuk, and the purpose of today's intermittent reinforcement email message is to discuss RAVT's approach to cognitive distortions. Many cognitive behavioral therapists will help people look at the automatic thoughts that they have about reality and help them examine the evidence as to whether these thoughts are distorted or not. In rationally motivated behavior therapy, we take more of a tough-minded approach and, at least initially, help people to prepare for the worst possible scenario. This allows us to examine the underlying rigid and extreme attitudes that give people a bias towards negative predictions and will, in the end, provide a longer-lasting fix to their problems. So, for example, when people come in and say, I'm going to get rejected, or I might turn in a poor performance, I don't reassure them that, reassure them that the evidence might suggest that they won't get rejected, or that they will turn in a good performance. Instead, I go along with their assumption and examine the underlying attitudes that they must not be rejected, that it would be unbearable if they were, that they must perform well, and it would be awful if they didn't. And once we challenge these attitudes and help people give them up, then they're going to be in a better position to examine the initial premise, which is that there's a chance that they will or will not get rejected, or that there's a chance that they might, in fact, do well if they work hard. So, in rationally motivated behavior therapy, we save the examination of inferences, assumptions, automatic thoughts, to the end of the discussion, therapeutic discussion. And what we do is prepare people for the grim reality that they believe may very well occur. This, in the long run, serves them far better, in my view, because, in many instances, they will get rejected and they will perform badly. And so... The rational approach is to help people accept themselves and accept rejection and accept at least that they're going to sometimes perform badly and that it's not the bloody end of the world. So I suggest that you take a close examination of the email message that I've written today and attempt to Resist the temptation to immediately reassure yourself when you have a negative prediction about how things are going to turn out. And instead, take a deep dive into your rigid and extreme thinking and work on challenging it and developing flexible and non-extreme thoughts about the worst case scenario. And then at the once you've convinced yourself that you could tolerate that worst-case scenario, then you'll be in a better position to estimate the probability of the worst-case scenario happening, happening, and that, too, will help you. But you will help yourself maximally if you go after the deeper core attitudes that lead to your emotional disturbance. I would also like to remind you that every Saturday I hold the Rational Emotive Behavioral Conversation Hour when I discuss with a volunteer a real problem. And in these discussions, you'll see me work with them and resist the temptation to assure them, reassure them that their worst case scenario won't happen, but help them develop a tough minded approach to life and its misfortune. This conversation is free to attend. It's held every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. in the UK, 4 p.m. in Moscow, and 6.30 in India. And you can get 
a good idea of how REBT can help you cope with whatever life may throw you. I hope to see you on Saturday.